In this video, we now want to look at the complex plane, also known as the Argan diagram. This is a plane proposed by J. F. Argan in an attempt to represent a complex number on a plane. Just like we can represent a real number on a straight line, you know, we have a real number line, a horizontal, then you start putting on numbers there, right? So, in a similar way for complex number, we can actually show it on a diagram. It's a plane known as the Argan diagram or simply the complex number plane. Now, with these diagrams, just like we have them on this side of the board, we can actually be able to determine what we call the argument of the complex number, in short, ag z. That ag z is also known as the polar angle of the complex number. Please put this down. What is the polar angle? What is the ag z, argument of z? That is the angle measured from positive x axis, take note, anticlockwise, that is counterclockwise, down to the line of the complex number. Does that make sense? Always remember that you measure this angle from positive x axis anticlockwise down towards the complex number line. Then you stop. It's just similar to what we learned from physics in one of our previous classes under vectors where I told you that the angle of a vector is generally conveniently measured from positive x axis then you turn anti-clockwise down to the line of the vectors you stop that's how we get the angle of a vector the same thing applies to this argument of z known as the polar angle now there are four possible cases or diagram that can be obtained depending on the value the, the, the sign, depending on the sign of x and y in the complex number. So let us quickly go through them here. We have the four cases here. Case 1, you can see that z equal to x plus i, y. So there, x and y are both positive. Of course, if you have to plot a graph, it's just like, you know, trying to plot x and y. If x is positive and y is positive, you know that the point will be located between positive y and positive x. The first quadrant. Are you getting me right? So all you need to do now, the, 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 the complex number line will be drawn from the origin in that first quadrant. You can see that which I use z to represent. Now, to get our polar angle for the first quadrant, you can see, measure from positive x as is down to the line of the complex number. That is theta and it is equal to argument of z. So simply, for any complex number located in the first quadrant, the argument of z is simply equal to theta. And in this first quadrant, look at it, to get theta is simply tan inverse of the vertical axis y over the horizontal axis x. Tan inverse of that. Is that okay? Because of this right angle triangle, which we're going to extract. Case 2. When the complex number is equal to minus x plus i y. So you see x is negative, y is what? Positive. Once again, if you have a negative value of x and a positive value of y, if you plot such points in the plane, you are going to see it between positive y and negative x. That is the second quadrant. So you can see the location of the complex number z here. Is that okay? Once again, take note of the argument of z. Theta is measured from positive x axis anticlockwise down to the line of z and then it stops. Theta there will support the argument of z. How do we get it? Watch. It's equal to 180 minus alpha. Now, alpha is this angle between this complex line and this negative x axis. You can see that, right? And for us to get alpha, once again, we are going to use alpha equal to tan inverse. You can see that in all, alpha is equal to tan inverse of y over x. So you drop your vertical, you get a right angle triangle, and then what do you do? You take your tan inverse of y over x, you get your alpha. Once you get your alpha, subtract that alpha from 180. Whatever value you get is your argument of z. The reason being that from this positive x to negative x is 180. Out of it, you know alpha. You are looking for this value. So it will be 180 minus what? Alpha. And you get your argument of z. Quickly, let us look at case 3. z is equal to negative x, negative i, y. So both x and y are negative. If you plot such point, you will notice that the point will be located in the third quadrant. Therefore, our complex number will be in the third quadrant. What is the argument of z? 
you measure from positive x axis down to the complex number line. You can see. Is that okay? But then you notice that the, the, the complex number made an angle alpha with negative x axis. So you need to get that value alpha. Once you get that value alpha, do you take note that this angle from this positive x axis down to the line of the complex number includes alpha as well too. It includes alpha. You need to step down this to get your right angle triangle, which we use in calculating alpha. Once you get alpha, add it to 180. You get your argument of z. You get your polar angle theta. Of course, because from positive x axis to negative x axis is 180. Out of it, the polar angle still stretched. It still moved into the, the third quadrant, adding up alpha to it. So whenever you have a case where the complex number is located in the third quadrant, it is 180 plus some angle called alpha, you now get your polar angle theta. Is that okay? That's argument of z. Case 4. In this case, x is positive, y is what? Negative. If you plot the point, you will notice that it will be the fourth quadrant. So the complex number line is located in the fourth quadrant. Once again, look at your argument of z from positive x as it down to this line of the complex number. So all you need to do, please I need to correct up something here. This is your alpha, not theta. I'm using theta to be the argument of z. That is the polar angle. So this is alpha. Good. So all you need to do is to calculate your alpha here using this right angle triangle. Then to get your argument of z, subtract alpha from 360. Because if you look at this whole thing, it's a complete circle, including what? Your alpha there. So if you subtract alpha from 360, the remaining angle will be from positive x as it's down to the line of the complex number you start. And that gives us our what? Argument of z, the polar angle. All right. Take note of this, that in all of these cases, alpha is equal to tan inverse y over x. Alpha, that angle you need to get. Then either subtract or add it to some other value to get your argument of z. Of course, notice something in the first quadrant. There is nothing like alpha there because this is already the first quadrant. If you draw, your polar angle would already be from the positive x as it's down to the line. The right angle triangle form there includes that polar angle argument of z directly, so you don't have any business with alpha in case one. Modulus of a complex number. How do we get that? Simply use Pythagoras theorem. You know that this line is z, and it is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So to get the magnitude of z, which is also known as modulus, which is also known as length of the complex number. It is simply z squared equal to y squared plus x squared. So to get your z, the magnitude, the modulus of that complex number, you take squared. Of course, this formula is something we already used to. In the next video, we're going to pick questions and then solve. Get the magnitude, get their argument. We have a very first question here under complex plane or a Dan diagram. In this question, we are asked to show minus 2 plus i on the complex plane and find modulus of minus 2 plus i, then argument of z. Take note that this minus 2 plus i is the complex number, so we can simply write z is equal to minus 2 plus i. So we are to show that and the complex plane. What do we do? So let's see that we're giving z to be equal to minus 2 plus i. Take note that the real part gives us x. You know, this is the same as x plus i, y. So you agree with me that x is equal to minus 2 and y is equal to invisible 1. That is the multiplier of i would give us y. Is that okay? Fine. Now we're going to draw the complex plane, the diagram diagram, and then show this. So I've got my axis, we have a x to be a negative value, so that's going to be on the negative x axis and y is positive value, so this is positive y. Alright, so you see that the complex number minus 2 plus i is located in the second quadrant between positive y and negative x. So all I need to do is draw something like this, so this is my z, this is my minus 2, minus 2 plus I. Alright, I've shown this on the complex plane. That's the solution. 
I want to do further things, I can just decide to show the argument of z. This is theta, which is equal to arg z. And of course, you know to get it, since it is the second quadrant, already you know that this part is alpha, so you can drop this and calculate the value of alpha using a uh, tan inverse, all right? So this is going to be 180 minus alpha to get the argument of z. Remember, we have the second part of the question there, where we have to calculate the argument of z. I guess we have done a pretty good job on this showing of minus 2 plus i on a complex plane. I've even added certain extra information. Okay, now let us look at the first part of the question where we have to calculate the magnitude of z, which is the same as the magnitude, also known as modulus, all right, modulus of z. And of course, to obtain that, you know from Pythagoras' theorem is equal to square root x squared plus y squared. So the modulus of minus 2 plus i is equal to square root x is minus 2, so I'm going to enclose that in bracket and square a plus y, which is 1 squared. This minus is of no use. Minus 2 all squared will still give you positive. You would recall that I told you something in one of our classes in physics. Is that okay? On the vector specifically, that if you calculate the magnitude of something, you know, magnitude, modulus, length, they are the same thing. The magnitude is always a positive result, so you don't really need to stress yourself putting negative there when solving. Alright, let's see what this is going to give to us. So the modulus, the modulus of minus 2 plus i is going to give us, what kind of this and you would get root 5 as your solution, root 5. So we are done with the first part of the question. Let us now move on to the second part of the question where we are to calculate the argument of z. For this problem, we've already established that at z is equal to 180 minus some angles, which is what? Alpha. So we're going to get alpha. How would I get it? Let's extract the right angle triangle from which we would obtain the alpha. All this I'm just showing is for you to see the full solution. In subsequent questions, I wouldn't bother extracting all these facts. We we'll just go directly to uh, solving the problem. Now, the x value is minus 2, the y value is 1. So you see, we can get our alpha from here. Alpha is simply tan inverse of y over x, which is equal to tan inverse of 1 over minus 2. The negative sign is of no use to us. Is that okay? It is the whole value that we want to get. If you obtain tan inverse of um, 1 over minus 2, let's see what we're going to get. Tan inverse of 1 over minus 2 is given minus 26.56. But like I said, we are only interested in the positive result because we're trying to calculate the argument, the value of the angle. So this is going to be 26.57 approximately in degrees. It implies that argument of z at z is now 180 minus 26.57. What would this give to us? Let's find out. Argument of z is now equal to, so we're going to have 180 minus 26.57. 26.57. So that's given me 153.43 degrees. Now I want to show you something. This 153.46 degrees can be converted to degree and minute. What do we do? Just pick 0.43. This 0.43 is the same as 0 0.43 and multiply it by 60. Multiply by what? 60. So I'm picking 0 0.43 times 60. And from here it's giving me 25.8. That 25.8 simply pick the whole number part, which is approximately 26. So this is going to give us 153 degrees in fact, 25, because we're picking just a whole part, 25 minutes. Does that make sense? Therefore, the result can either be this 153.43 degrees, or it can be 153 degrees, 25 minutes. So, that is the argument of Z for this question.